uh, but no mosque has ever been destroyed. And yet, this Herva synagogue was destroyed by the Palestinians. Um, there is an ancient prophecy of the uh, ones who um, worked in that synagogue back, I don't know, a couple hundreds, 300 years ago, something like that. Whenever it was, this prophecy was made. I think it was the Vilna the guy on something. It said that the synagogue would be destroyed four times and would be rebuilt. As soon as the fourth reconstruction is completed, the very next day, this ancient prophecy says, the Jewish temple rebuilding will begin. Whoa. <laughs> Isn't that neat? So, listen to this. On Monday, this coming Monday, the Herva Synagogue will be rededicated, completed, beautiful, beautiful construction. And the next day, Tuesday, is the International Temple Mount Awareness Day, drawing attention to the fact that only Muslims are allowed to pray on the mount, and the temple is to be a house of prayer for all people, not just some people. So March 16th, is Nisan 1, the anniversary of the dedication of the tabernacle in the wilderness, the first day of the divine service by the Levitical and Aaronic priesthood, and the first time the divine presence, the glory, the Shekinah, rested in the tabernacle. The Temple Institute in Jerusalem is calling on everyone, Jew and Gentile alike, to ascend the Temple Mount in accordance with Halakhic, that is, Jewish law, on that day in order that the God of Israel would know that His people mean business with getting the Temple rebuilt. So the very next day they're going to declare they're going up to the Temple Mount and declare Temple Mount Awareness Day in hopes that God will hear them and let God know that they plan to rebuild the Temple. Fascinating, isn't it? Everything is, boy, just so prophetic. Here's an email from a uh, viewer. Uh, Brother Church, regarding the National ID card is discussed on uh, your Thursday web video. Uh, how is it that you believe that an ID card would be equivalent to the mark of the beast? The scripture says that the mark would be demanded by the Antichrist, as I understand it, and will be a mark, a tattoo, or some other type mark on the forehead or the hand or wrist, he says. How would a national ID card be different from that, that of a driver's license, social security number, or other having other than having more specific information. It would seem to me that the biometric ID card would just be a precursor to the actual mark of the beast. You are exactly right. It is only a precursor. Uh, it's just one step further because the government, that is the proposed new world order people who are planning for world government, are making it one step at a time, allowing the people to become accustomed to the idea of a personal identification number. When the Antichrist arrives, he'll say that the ID cards are easily transferred from one person to another, that there's a need to permanently mark everyone with a tattoo or implanted ID chip, which, by the way, could be surgically removed and re-implanted in someone else. And you're right. Um, a national ID card, by the way, would be simply a replication uh, the Social Security card, uh, which was uh, established back uh, under Franklin D. Roosevelt. And then the, uh, I don't know when the driver's license were, but you notice the driver's license at one time carried Social Security numbers. And there was a big stink over that, especially here in Oklahoma. And so they, they dropped out doing that simply because... It is an invasion of a person's privacy. And you've got to understand that when um, you have this card, this, this card is not a health card, it's not a driver's license, it's, it's not a Social Security card, it's a worker's card, which means that everybody's going to have to have it, including children. And I don't know when they're going to start. You know, they could say, well, 16 or 14. Uh, and then they'll drop it down to 10, maybe 6, because they're entering school. They've got to be able to identify them, you know, in, in school. And then they'll drop it down to preschool. And before you know it, it'll be, you know, coming out of the hospital after birth. Another one here. My name is, uh, well, I'll, I'll just simply say a good 
viewer. I'm writing with regards to your yesterday's video in which you mentioned the mark of the beast. And this is basically the same questioning. He says, um, this system, oh, he says, at his job, we've been using biometric system as a way to punch in and out of work. We've been using this for over a year, and I pray that it isn't a slow movement toward the mark of the beast. Well, I hate to tell you, I think it is a slow movement toward the mark of the beast, but it's just a slow movement. We're not there yet. Uh, I think the mark of the beast will be implemented in the middle of the tribulation period. And listen up, Christians. We're out of here before then. I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. Gary Stearman says we, we should uh, be out of here in a pre-pre-tribulation rapture. In other words, uh, more than just two minutes before the tribulation starts. He thinks that it will be uh, a year, two years, maybe three before the tribulation starts. That's okay with me. Anyway, he goes on to say, thank you for your daily show and God bless you. You have no idea how important the work is uh, that you so is to so many. Thank you very much, sincerely. God bless you for watching our program. I hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you again Monday with our analysis of the news.